Virtual reality, the next frontier in education, entertainment, and exploration. VR has made its way into the mainstream consciousness, as we've witnessed the world's biggest tech companies develop and release numerous versions of their own VR devices into the consumer markets. Many of these household name companies hope to make history while ushering us into a new age of fully immersive sensory experiences. By utilizing the five senses, new tech will be able to transport individuals into augmented, virtual, and mixed environments that feel, smell, and look completely real. Future generations will be able to find new and more effective ways to teach, learn, and entertain one another through immersive interactive adventures and delve into aspects of medicine and healing never seen or attempted before. By exploring these intricacies of augmented, mixed, and virtual realities, researchers will hopefully better understand the relationships between the mind, body, and the environments they are interacting with. The first steps in VR tech development began in 1939 with the invention of the Viewmaster, a stereoscopic visual simulator. Then in 1962, Morton Heilig unveiled the Sensorama, a multi-sensory machine he dubbed Experience Theater that is considered to be one of the earliest VR systems created. In 1968, Ivan Sutherland and student Bob Sproul created what is considered to be the first head-mounted display system. From 1970 through 1990, most of the existing VR tech was used in the military, medical, and aviation industries. The 90s represented a significant stride in the VR journey as companies began releasing virtual reality headsets for consumers. Both Sega and Virtuality launched their own versions of the VR experience, which included headsets and exoskeleton gloves, effectively moving the needle towards more immersive experiences. The CAVE Automatic Virtual Environment cave, was unveiled which allowed users to be able to see their own bodies in relation to others present in the room. Louis Rosenberg, in conjunction with the U.S. Air Force's Armstrong Labs, created the Virtual Fixtures System. This system was the first example of true augmented reality, as it used an exoskeleton and head viewer to allow the overlay of physical, real 3D virtual objects in the user's line of sight from their real-world environment. This created an experience incorporating sight, sound, and touch. It wasn't until 2010 that we saw the first incarnation of the famous Oculus Rift headset, a design that would inspire future versions of VR devices that we see dominating the markets today. Sony, Meta, Google, Amazon, Apple, and Microsoft all began funding and research for their own augmented, mixed, and virtual reality technology. Through the research of these companies, we began to see innovations like motion tracking with haptic feedback, finger tracking, higher resolution displays, and wider fields of view. Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg stated, virtual reality is really a new communication platform. By feeling truly present, you can share unbounded spaces and experiences with the people in your life. Imagine sharing not just moments with your friends online, but entire experiences and adventures. 2021 saw the unveiling of the first VR flight simulator training device, approved by the European Union Aviation Safety Agency. This device allowed pilots to perform dangerous and tricky maneuvers for the first time within the confines of a safe virtual environment a revolutionary breakthrough in aviation training and design. This brings us to our present moment. We have seen how far VR tech has come since the 1950s, but what else can we expect from the next decade of research and development? Aside from the entertainment aspect, what contributions will virtual, augmented, and mixed reality tech make to science, medicine, and real-world scenarios? A new software has been developed by scientists at the University of Cambridge called VLoom. This VR software allows super-resolution microscopy data to be analyzed and visualized in virtual reality. What this means is, scientists will be able to go inside of cells to analyze the structures of the cell, identify the problems, and then effectively treat and develop cures for sickness and disease. Dr. Stephen F. Lee, leading researcher from the University of Cambridge's chemistry department, had this to say about the VR software. Biology occurs in 3D, but up until now, it has been difficult to interact with the data on a 2D computer screen in an intuitive and immersive way. It wasn't until we started seeing our data in virtual reality that everything clicked into place. 
Meanwhile, researchers at Indiana University are using a new VR immersive technology therapy as treatment for people with substance abuse disorders. Professor Brandon Oberlin from the university's psychiatry department had this to say of the new treatment. VR technology is clinically effective and increasingly common for treating a variety of mental health conditions, such as phobias, post-traumatic stress disorder, and post-operative pain, but has yet to find a wide use in substance use disorders, intervention, or recovery. After developing their treatment process for four years, their findings, published in Discover Mental Health, indicated that virtual reality treatments can effectively lower the risk of relapse rates while increasing the patient's connectivity with their future outcomes and choices. Remote learning technology has become increasingly more relevant in the current post-pandemic landscape, and according to sources at McGill University, an artificial intelligence tutoring system has been created that has the ability to outperform human instructors in the field of brain surgery. This AI-powered tutor, dubbed the Virtual Operative Assistant, VOA, uses a learning algorithm that teaches safe, effective surgical techniques and provides personalized feedback. 70 medical students were recruited to perform virtual brain tumor removals by the Neurosurgical Simulation and Artificial Intelligence Learning Center at the Neuro, Montreal Neurological Institute Hospital. Three groups were monitored during the procedures, receiving feedback and instruction. One by the AI tutor assistant, one by a group of expert instructors, with the third control group receiving no instruction. The research concluded that students who received instruction and feedback from the virtual operative assistant learned 2.6 times faster and achieved an outcome that was 36% better performance-wise than the other groups. Dr. Ronaldo Del Maestro, senior authority of the study, had this to say of the trials. Artificially intelligent tutors like the VOA may become a valuable tool in training the next generation of neurosurgeons. The VOA significantly improved expertise while fostering an excellent learning environment. Ongoing studies are assessing how in-person instructors and AI-powered intelligent tutors can most effectively be used together to improve the mastery of neurosurgical skills. So there you have it. While many have voiced concerns over whether AI will be an effective or safe tool for humans to utilize in the coming decades, the studies conducted thus far have yielded some promising results. Whether you are for or against the new AI technology being studied, tested, and deployed across multiple industries, it is hard to deny the usefulness of these groundbreaking advancements. Humans can achieve a greater skill level in their chosen field, gain deeper knowledge of each subject studied, and test themselves in dangerous, simulated environments without fear of harm or fatal outcomes. This tech will be responsible for shortening the learning curve while training humans to control their reactions and decisions in dangerous scenarios. Virtual, mixed, and augmented realities are here to stay, and the future is already looking brighter than ever. What are your thoughts on this? Please leave a comment below and like and subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this in the future.